joined by Mark Adler. Tell us about your documentary. All right, so it's uh, Command and Control is a documentary. It was in limited theatrical release. It's going to be on public television next year. It's about a near, near nuclear catastrophe, barely averted. Not too many people know about this in the state of Arkansas in 1980. And actually, uh, a missile blew up in the silo. Uh, someone was killed, actually. The, the warhead essentially disappeared. No one could find it for 12 hours. The Air Force is looking for it. It's in a field in Arkansas. It obviously didn't go off, because if it had, there would be no state of Arkansas. Yeah. But it came very close to happening. And a physicist in the film says it, it could happen. And in fact, it's only a matter of time before an accident occurs, because this, this aging nuclear uh, weapons system that we have is basically you know, nothing has ever functioned perfectly in the history of humankind, and we have a lot of hundreds of these, you know, weapons sitting around. So, cautionary tale, yeah, we might say. Yeah, daunting thought yeah. there. Now, um, no one had ever done a documentary before. This was just a, did they kind of brush this news story under the rug? Or yeah, so. What inspired you to want to tell the story? Well, so what happened was a book uh, by Eric Schlosser uh, of the same name, Command and Control, was written, and Robert Kenner, who's a filmmaker I've been working with for about 20 years, we're very uh, great collaborative relationship with him. He made a documentary based on the book. And of course, I was really excited to be working on it because I'm passionate about these ideas. And for a composer to have an opportunity to do something where, you know, you're, you're passionate about what the story is, even though you're sort of essentially illuminating it with your music, that's, that's a kind of a win-win for me. So, yeah. you know. So how much archival footage versus like interviews is this? Yeah, so the wonderful thing about the film is it's a, it's a really deft combination of archival footage, interviews, and recreations. And it's put together in such a way that it's really seamless. You can't really tell what is what. So you really feel like you're there. It almost plays more like a dramatic feature than it does a documentary. And for the music, uh, I did a lot of electronica, you know, early electronic analog synthesizer sounds because it took place in 1980. So that's what sort of pointed us in that direction. And yeah. Well, we love documentaries. I say the more the better, you know, as opposed to some kind of frivolous sitcom. You know, it's always great to learn about something. It not only gives you a sense of history, but it gives you hopefully some inspiration in the future. Yeah. You know, uh, what advice do you have to the young documentary makers out there that, you know, might just be starting to, you know, pursue something they're passionate about? Well, I think, I think. It's what I tried to do as a as a composer when I was younger. It's really you follow your passion and, and, and you you're inspired by what you see and hear and you realize that maybe you might have the ability to do something similar and to sort of stay with it and be persistent, you know.